Now I've caught sight of something over there. And I'm wondering if it's a duck in distress. Aha! Look at that! It's an angel duck! <laughs> oh, it's full of water. What are you doing down here? Well, look at that. Now that is the last thing I was expecting to see this morning. Quack, quack. Well, you're definitely coming home with me. I've got lots of other ducks who are going to be very happy to meet an angel duck. All hail, angel duck. I'm just about to pull something out of the mud here. I spotted a little rounded edge. I've no idea what it is. It might be absolutely nothing. But let's see. It's just here. And I'm just taking it out. Ooh. Ooh, what is that? That looks interesting, doesn't it? Let's give this a rinse off in this lovely clean water. What is it? Oh, look! It's the Holy Grail. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. Look, it's decorated at the bottom there. Oh, wow. Oh wow, look at that, I love it. Wow, I've no idea how old it is, or even what it is. It looks like some kind of candlestick or something. Oh look, it's decorated up here as well. Isn't that pretty? I mean, it was fairly wedged in there, so I'm thinking it's not it's not modern. I mean, it's not like a modern offering or anything. That was fairly wedged in there. It's got to be at least 19th century. That's special. Look at that, everyone. at this mud here because things tend to get caught on this exposed mud when the tide is going down and I've already picked up a tiny little button with nothing on it. But I just saw this and do you know what? It looks like, I mean, it might not be, it looks like a really really flimsy ring. I wonder if it is. Or I wonder if it's just a piece of metal. I'm going to bend it outwards in a minute and see if it's a ring or if it's just a, just a boring piece of metal. I'm not sure if that's a decoration on there or whether I'm just being very, very hopeful. What do you think? And will I break it if I try and open it up? We will find out shortly. Now this here looks like a, an interesting little piece of metal. A nice hook. Let's go and give it a wash. I'm sure I'll be able to use this in something. Oh yeah, I really like that and and it's got the broad arrow on there as well, look. 
Can you see it? I have just spotted a really beautiful button over there. I'm going to go over the area really slowly and see if you can see it. It's somewhere in the middle. Can you see it? There it is. Isn't that lovely? Just sitting there like that. Now I think that that is a Royal Marines button. And I believe, is that the Queen's crown? I think it's Victorian. There, isn't that beautiful? What a great find. Ooh, what's this I wonder? Another curious piece of metal. No idea what that is. Nothing much, I shouldn't think. I might take it though. Might be able to put it in a collage or an assemblage. Pop it in my pop it in my pouch. Now down here I can see some glass poking out, and it's just here. And I can see London on it. Now, is it broken? Is it a whole bottle? Will we be able to find out what it says on there? <gasps> it is a whole bottle! Oh wow! It is a whole bottle! And it looks really nice. I can't believe my camera's nearly running out. Oh my gosh, it is a whole bottle! Look at this! Oh my god, what a treat! I'll try and rinse it off before my camera runs out of battery. Lovely bottle. Lipton. London. Lipton Limited London. It's really, really nice. And it's completely intact. It's got a lovely chunky feel to it as well. Now I'm having a look at this area here and there's lots and lots of little pieces of metal. I just spotted this here, which definitely looks like some form of old lead token there. So pretty old. I don't know, 1700s maybe, maybe earlier. Oh, that's a nice button. Look at that. Now, what does that say? What does that say? Ah, Woolwich. Somebody in Woolwich. Perfect. I'll be looking that up later. Just look at that beautiful button. This is a really delightful, delightful spot here. You just never know what you're going to find underneath these stones amongst the, amongst the pins. Now, there's been quite a lot of erosion here. I can tell 
and there's all sorts of interesting things here. Uh, first of all, let's go for the things that I usually go for. Look, look at that. It's a pipe poking out there, just waiting to be plucked out. It's a little bit broken, but let's pull it out. Oh, look at that. A lovely extraction. Oh. Now, if it wasn't for that little bit there, it would be completely intact. Let's just give it a little rinse in this puddle. Now that's lovely. Sort of a, a mid to, to later 19th century pipe. I really, I really like that. Okay, put that in my bag. Now there's also the tip of a stem here. It could just be, ah yeah, it is. It's just a stem. Hey ho, you cannot win them all. You just can't. But there's lots of nice nails and things here as well. I've been picking up some beautiful copper nails. Look, there's a lovely nail here. Oh, look, and it's got the, the broad arrow on it. Look, can you see that? Let me just, there it is, look. That crow's foot there, just on the side, the broad arrow, indicating that it is government property. And there's another one here, look. Let's see if this one's got the broad arrow on it as well. It probably will. It looks very similar. Give it a bit of wash. I can't see it actually, but look at it, isn't it? Isn't it lovely? <laughs> There's just something really beautiful about that nail. A lot more beautiful than my nails. Wouldn't you agree? Okay, I'm gonna show you this piece of wood. Look, it's a really rather nice fashioned piece of wood there. I wonder what it comes from. Well, I mean, obviously it's going to be something from a ship, isn't it? But it's really, it's really rather nice. I wonder what part of the ship it comes from. Oh, look, and look down here. There's a 303 just stuck here in the mud. So look, here's my piece of wood. You can see the defined shape of it a lot better now. I am going to lug this home and um, yeah, I'd like to find out what it comes from. I mean, I know it's probably a ship, but which part? Oh, look at that. It's an elephant. It looks like some kind of, maybe a hunting scene. I always say, do turn over pottery when you see it like that, just plain, because you just don't know whether there might be something really interesting on the other side, like this. I mean, oftentimes there's nothing at all, but sometimes you get a real treat. Well, I've not seen this design before. I'd love to know what the whole design is. Now, just down here, I've seen the edge of something round. Oh, I've also just seen a little bit of pipe stem there. But anyway, uh, yeah, a little bit of round metal just there, see it? Now, <laughs> it could be some kind of washer. It could be, I don't know, the back of a watch. This is the moment when you can kind of get all hopeful and think, oh, what is this? What is this? Is it something exciting? And it could be absolutely nothing at all. It could be a little tag. It could
could be um, like a sail islet, which is now what I'm veering towards because I can see there's a hole. Oh, oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, I don't think it's anything very much, but let's wash it and then I'll come back and see if there's a pipe bowl on the end of that stem. Okay, let's wash it off. Such a tease. What is it? Oh, I had high hopes, you know, I had high hopes for this. Uh, it looks like some, some kind of something to do with furniture or something. Okay, well, here we are. It's nothing particularly exciting, but I'm going to take it. I'll use it in a piece of artwork. How's that? Oh, for a moment, I thought it could be the back of a watch. Let's go back and investigate the pipe stem. Oh, that was so promising, wasn't it? Right, let's have a look. What have we got here? Oh, it is just a pipe stem. Okay, well, you win some, you lose some. There's a nice bit of exposed mud here. And look what I've seen just down there. This here, now, I wonder what it is. I wonder if there's anything on the other side. Oh, it's interesting. So it's an earring. <laughs> I thought it might be a little bad, but look, it's a clip-on earring. There we go. Very swish. That will go with my single earring collection, of which I have many. I wonder if there's anything else here that's eroding out of this mud. Let's have a look. Oh, look, I can see a coin. It's one for the Thames charity box. Oh, and another one. Another one. Is this a modern coin? Oh no, that's not modern actually. That is a halfpenny. It is a Victoria halfpenny. Oh, isn't that lovely? Isn't that really nice? Um, and the date on there is, looks like, I think it's 18... 66 Oop, here comes the here comes the river yeah I think it's 18 1866. A nice little find. Let's continue our search along here. Oh look, is that a coin? No, that's not a coin. this looks like a little mouse it's like a little mouse Christmas decoration anyone recognize him everyone thank you very much for watching and for accompanying me on that mudlarking outing along the river thames and thank you for all the comments and the feedback that you gave me on my last few videos last week if you haven't seen it i put out a video about my visit to the restaurant in New York, Keen's Steakhouse, which is chock full of clay pipes. Actually, there's about 90,000 apparently. And so it was a really fun video to make and it was just a, a great place to visit as well. So much history. So where can I start? There's always so much to um, talk to you about. So firstly, I wanted to tell you that 
I decided to take down the Thames charity box, which is now empty, ready to be filled up again, down to the coin change machine to see how much I've collected over the last few months. So you may have seen the YouTube short that I put out where I asked if you wanted to guess how much was in there. I'll play it for you again if you didn't see it. Hi everyone, I'm here in my studio and I'm having a big sort out. And as some of you may know, over the last few months, I have been collecting up all the modern coinage that I can find on the Thames foreshore whilst mudlarking. And today is the day that I'm going to go down to the coin change machine to see exactly how much I have collected. And so take a look and why not have a guess in the comments as to how much I have collected. See how close you can get to the exact figure in pounds or dollars. If it's dollars, we will do a conversion. So here it is in this bowl here. Lots and lots of small change all collected up on the Thames foreshore over the last few months. What's your guess? How much do you think? Put it in the comments below and I'll be back later to give you the answer. So how much do you reckon is in there? Well, at the end of this video, I will tell you. And also towards the end of this video, we're going to find out who has won Malcolm's book, Mudlarked. And so stick around for that. If you entered that about uh, three weeks ago, I think, or two weeks ago, um, you will now find out very shortly who is going to be winning this beautiful book all about amazing mudlarking finds from the River Thames. So now, um, oh, one other thing. Okay, you may wonder what this weird little thing is here. I have got myself a microphone. Now, I know that the sound in my studio has left a lot to be desired, and I'm hoping that this might go some way to remedying that. It's um, one that I got the other day and I'd like to give a big shout out to Sahabi at Curry's in Woolwich who um, helped me to decide which microphone to get. So thank you very much Sahabi. Your help was very much appreciated and let's see if this is going to work. Um, I rather like it, like I said, it's quite retro. I'll have to try and stop myself from breaking out into song. Don't worry, I won't break out into song. So where can I start? So many odd things as usual on the River Thames. Let's start with um, this here, which is rather lovely. There's been some debate whether it's modern or whether it's old. I like to think that it's old because it was quite firmly wedged in there by the rocks in the mud. Um, some people have suggested it could be a modern Indian type offering. I'm not too sure about that. I'm not too sure. I can't find any identifying marks on it. There's no maker's mark. And when I cleaned the mud out, I did find at the bottom the remainders of some wax there. So it's obviously been used for, for candles. I like to imagine it on an old galleon back in the 19th century with the captain writing his logbook. And this is on his desk whilst he's there with his quill writing his logbook. But then again, I have got quite a good imagination, as you probably know. Um, or is it something more modern? I deliberately haven't cleaned it off. Another reason why I think it's been there quite a long time is because it's actually very, very discoloured. Now, on the theme still of ships, let's have a look at that big piece of wood, which I have here next to me. Oh, it's quite heavy. Ooh, now the book's going to fall on the floor. One moment, let me put the book in a safe place. Right, here we are, look. This is this piece of wood here. And I must admit, I haven't done a great deal of research. I probably could have made a little bit more of an effort, but I do know that some of you out there are pretty good on maritime artifacts. And I'm thinking that this must certainly come from a ship. Does anybody know what part? Please enlighten me, please, please enlighten us all as to where this piece of wood came. As you can see, there's a nail there. There's a, well, actually, I think that's a knot, that, that little hole there. Um, there's another nail here. So, um, yes, what do you reckon? Where did it come from? Again, um, it was a, an outing for odd things. 
I picked this up. I do collect a lot of metal. You probably think, why does she just pick up everything that she sees? I have big boxes of random metal bits because I like to make um, assemblages out of them. There's something really inspiring about all these different pieces of metal, including this little piece of copper tubing. But what makes it interesting are the little holes in it. So I don't know if it ever really had a function, but somebody out there might know. So if you do know, please let me know. And then for the last of the mystery items, what are these? These things which often pretend to be some kind of huge gold sovereign poking out of the mud and then they turn out to be these things. And I've actually got quite a lot of them in varying sizes. They look like the... Um, fittings that you find on a chest of drawers but what are they all doing in the mud look i've got loads they must come from ships as well i've got uh, quite a lot in different types of design and they always present themselves in a most promising way and then it's kind of disappointing when i pull them out as lovely as they are what are they what are they so moving on to this little button here, which is marked with H.S. Samuels of 21 Hare Street in Woolwich. So I started to research H.S. Samuels, 21 Hare Street, Woolwich, and I couldn't find H.S. Samuels. But what I did find was several other tailors who have been based at 21 Hare Street. So there was Armfield, the new hosier and outfitter, Woolwich Gazette 1910, for smart ties, vests, hosiery and caps. And then in June 1881, so even earlier, R.B. Dale, sole agent of the best make of silk-faced fast pile velveteens and specialising also in 1879 in black silks. They were clearly the, the, the times to be walking around in Woolwich with all these black silks and marvellous velveteens and hosiery and caps and all these stylish things. But as for H.S. Samuels, I couldn't find him. So maybe he came afterwards or maybe he was there previously. This lovely little bottle with Lipton's London on it. I haven't actually seen a bottle like this before. It's very quaint. I'm not quite sure what would have been in it but of course Lipton's was and is well known for its tea and it was founded by Sir Thomas Lipton in the, the mid 19th century so maybe it had some kind of essence or, or something like that in here maybe somebody out there knows what this bottle may have held I've got to confess that I'm not a massive fan of Lipton's tea I like my tea quite strong I actually prefer Earl Grey tea, to be honest, but Lipton's tea, I do find that it's a little bit too weak. And when you put the bag in the hot water, it has to stay there for absolutely ages before you get anything out of it. So that's my, my honest feeling about Lipton's tea. No offence to Sir Thomas Lipton. Um, what else? Oh, the little tiny ring, which is here. Just a, a real little wisp of a ring, which I did manage to unbend and as you can see here it is it has the faintest little pattern on there so maybe some kind of a, a, a prize from a fairground but certainly a very very cheap little ring but who knows what its history is maybe somebody gave it to their girlfriend um, after winning it at the fair it's very very small just about goes halfway up my little finger Right, here is Malcolm Russell's book, Mudlarked. A few weeks ago, I did a video and I invited people to put a comment with Mudlarked or hashtag Mudlarked in the comments. And uh, I said that I would draw the winner in a few weeks. So today is that day and we are about to find out. I'm going to do it right now. Right, so here we are on the comment picker site. So the first thing I need to do is put in the link to the video, which is here. copy and paste that. Right, so we now have the link to Malcolm's video. We're going to filter duplicate users 
and then we are going to filter comments based on a specific text which was hashtag mudlarked with an apostrophe so let's put that in there hashtag mudlarked and there we have it exclude blacklist users do i have any blacklist users well i don't know but if i do i don't want them to win oh no okay well <laughs> i don't know who they are if i've got any so we'll um, let them join in too. Right, get the YouTube comments. Oh, I have to put that in first. Four plus five equals nine. My daughter just passed A-level maths. She definitely didn't get it from me, but I can do that kind of sum. Just little sums. So how many comments have we got? 588. Wow, that is pretty good. Right, so up we go here now. No, we don't. No, we don't go up there. We go down here. Start raffle and pick random number. Okay, so are you watching? We're about to see who's won Malcolm's book. So start. Here we go. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> it's A1 Scrap Metal Jones. And you may regret saying this. Another great video. Thank you. I will put on my kiss proof lippy and give you a big kiss if I win, Malcolm. Well, um, well, you've just got lots of witnesses that that's what you're going to do. So I'm going to expect absolute proof. So well done again to A1 Scrap Metal Jones, who I'm sure at this very moment is scrabbling around trying to locate his kiss proof lipstick. And Malcolm's also a winner. He's going to receive a kiss proof kiss from A1 Scrap Metal Jones. So well done to everybody. And sorry if you didn't win, you can of course find Malcolm's amazing book online and in lots of good bookshops and it's well worth a read. So um, do, do check it out if you haven't already. So now I'm going to tell you the answer to how much money was in the Thames charity box here the coins that I've collected up along the River Thames over the last few months. And so I'm now going to play you a little video with the answer. So here we are guys with the pot of money which I have collected along the Thames foreshore over the last few months whilst mudlarking. And we are about to find out how much this is going to convert into in pounds. going up. And how much have we got? And there we have it. A grand total of £33.73. So £33.73p. There it is. £33.73p. And so well done if you got that right or if you came anywhere near it. So we'll have to look at what the equivalent in dollars is um, because I know that a lot of you are in the USA. Uh, so where is the money going to go? Well, I think that because the original mudlarks were uh, very, very poor, often children, sometimes adults too though, and they were scrabbling around in the mud looking for anything they could find to sell to feed their family, i.e. they were very, very poor. They were society's outcasts really. So I think it's only appropriate that this money should go to people on the margins of society. And what I've decided to do is there's quite a lot of homeless people in London in various places, and I'm going to divide the money up into five pounds, um, bits of five pounds, and I'm going to give that money to some of the homeless people to do with what they want to do with it. There is, of course, the Totally Thames Festival coming up for the whole month of September. And there's absolutely loads of Thames related uh, events going on, all sorts of things. And some of them are online, so you can join from wherever you are. But if you are here, there are every weekend some exhibitions which are going to be absolutely amazing in different venues each weekend 
of mudlarks showing their incredible mudlarking finds from the River Thames. And so take a look on the Thames Festival website to find out where they are. But from memory, there's the Roman Amphitheatre, there's St Paul's Cathedral, there's the Maritime Museum and Waterman's Hall as well. So, I mean, just the venues are, are, are worth a visit. And I will be at Waterman's Hall on the 3rd and 4th of September showing some of my finds. I've been having a great time choosing th some things to take. And then I will also be at the Maritime Museum on Sunday the 11th of September all day. I'm actually doing a talk on the Saturday the 10th, which is sold out. But I will be there a couple of hours before in the actual uh, lecture theatre where I'm doing the talk with my finds. So if you are there on the Saturday, you could always pop in and take a look at some of the things that I'm bringing along there. That's on the 10th. So I really hope that you can make it to some of these exhibitions. And the other thing is, yes, on the 24th and 25th of September, I'm going down to Cornwall, which is where I grew up, which I absolutely love. Um, and haven't been down there for a while, but I'm going down there with Simon Bourne of Sci Finds and Steve Johnson of the Hovercraft History Hunters. And we're going to be doing some metal detecting and it's uh, a venue, well, I say venue, uh, fields which haven't been detected before. And it is, I think, something like £50 for the weekend, which includes camping. Or if you come for just one day, it's 20 And if you're not detecting, it's free. It's Cornwall. So if you happen to be in a position to be able to shoot down to Cornwall that weekend, it would be great to see you. And you can contact Simon about that. Um, it's scifines at outlook.com. Or you can shoot me a message as well and I'll let you know. So I think that is about it now. And so again, thank you so much for watching and thank you for all your help. There's quite a nice selection of uh, challenges here to try and identify. It's always a lot of fun trying to get to the bottom of these mysteries. And I really appreciate your help. Thank you too to everybody who has donated to my Ko-fi account. Your donations are truly appreciated. And thank you most of all for watching my videos, joining in with these adventures and just being you. And I wish you all an absolutely super week ahead. So from me, Angel Duck, let's get Angel Duck down to so, uh, say goodbye. Angel Duck and strange little shiny mouse. I wish you a good week ahead. We wish you a good week ahead and we'll see you again very soon for more adventures, more mudlarking adventures along the River Thames. Take care. Bye bye. Where will you go? Won't you miss the ones you know? I'll be here, hanging on, waiting for your call. As a wave passing by, leave a mark in our minds to turn the memories. River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. River's gonna cry when you're.